See, I don't know where I stand with the name Viltrox. Nice boxes though, nice boxes. It's like an Apple product. Really, really smart boxes. So 10 out of 10 for packaging. So yes, this video we are talking about the Viltrox 85 mm 1.8 prime lens, which they very kindly sent me. Take the lens cap off. Uh, <laughs> I use lens caps. Um, so this is the 85 mm prime for the Nikon Z mount. And they kindly sent me this asking if I would do a little review for them. Now, I know what you're thinking, I'm no sellout. I actually bought this lens for the Fuji mount probably about two years ago. I owned it for about nine months. I bought it for weddings, events, and all that sort of stuff stopped, didn't it? So we went into, the world went crazy, so everything stopped. So I ended up selling my 85mm 1.8 Viltrox lens because I used it on about two weddings and that was about it, not much else. So yeah, it didn't, but I did use it around the house a lot. I did use it on a few product shoots and whatnot. So I did, and I did try using it for video. So I did get a feel of, of Viltrox. But before we get into that, I want to ask you a question. I'm going to look you in the eye and ask you a question, all right? Are you a gear snob? Right? If you can answer that honestly, because I actually think I kind of am, but I suppose the difficulty is because I'm buying stuff for work, I never, and obviously buying an expensive camera, you, you never want to put, you never want to compromise on the glass that you're putting in front of your camera. You spend a lot of money on a camera, you don't really want to compromise there, do you? So I always worry about buying Chinese or third party lenses because I'm thinking, hang on, am I compromising? Is my customer going to see the difference? Is it going to, is it going to have reliability issues down the line? You know, is there a reason why it's only 400 quid and not 1400 quid like the, uh, the, the manufacturer that you, uh, that you would normally buy. But I have to say, and if you can detach, if you can ask yourself the question, is it a hobbyist purchase? Is it a professional purchase? Is it something I'm gonna use a lot? Is it something that needs to last a long time? Um, is it an investment? Whatever way you wanna look at it, um, how do you justify the extra value? Because I, I, I have got to say that I've owned this lens now probably three months. I owned the previous one about, say, let's say a year. And I think Viltrox are exceptional, exceptional lenses, even, with, even ex excluding the value aspect of it. Because the retail on this lens is 350 quid. But if you'd put a 900 pound tag on this and said it was made by another, a brand that you were more familiar with, would you know the difference? Do you know, because ultimately, I don't want this video to be about this lens so much because I think Viltrox as a company are knocking out consistently good optical glass. Um, now I've got a lot of friends who shoot Viltrox um, and they love them. And I can't actually find anybody that doesn't like the Viltrox lenses. Now, as with anything, cameras, lenses, whatever you want, um, the strengths and weaknesses with everything. So when you buy the lenses, it's up to you then to do some testing to say, hang on a minute, this thing is crap at these apertures or, you know, the ISO isn't very good past here or whatever. But that's up to you to find that out. Um, so in this video, we're going to be talking about what the Viltrox pros and cons are, um, or whether or not you're better off investing in the proper Nikon version or the G Master version or whatever. Now, I can't compare the lens, the 85mm um, version in the in the Nikon Z mount, but I've got the Nifty 50 Z mount. So we've got some images of that. And now if you look in the description below, you can download some of the images and have a play and have a pixel peep and see whether or not um, but if you don't want to know and just want to know first impressions, then the Viltrox is fantastic and eight, even at 1.8 is a fantastic lens. So yeah, really, really nice. But what I will say is that the lens hoods are absolute crap. So if Viltrox by any chance are watching this, that, no, I just, Viltrox lens, uh, lens hoods, um, yeah. No, so we'll, we'll get into some images in a minute, but let me just give you a brief, I'll just take it off the camera. We've got it on the Nikon, this is the Z mount, but the lens itself is the same if you buy a Canon, a Nikon, a, a Fuji, like I said, it's just got a different, um, it's just adapted for a different body there. I've just had my sensor cleaned, literally two weeks ago at the photo show, so I can't believe I'm gonna leave that there without anything on. <laughs> I haven't got a body cap because I wasn't thinking of that. Um, but yeah, this is the, the fella, fantastic build quality, rock solid, smooth as you like, nice, massive, uh, manual focus area there. So it, it, it's a wonderfully built lens. You don't have any fancy weather resist. You're not gonna get that for 350 quid here, come on. And you don't have a manual focus switch. But other than that, it's a wonderful lens. I would definitely stick a step up ring on there instead of using a lens hood or something like that or whatever. But 
Yeah, um, what you also get is these firmware, nifty firmware plug-in debris on the back of the, on the back of the uh, the lens there, if you can see that. Uh, you see him there? Where is he? There he is. Yeah, so you, as soon as you get your lens, if you're gonna buy one, you probably need to do a firmware update just to make sure that you've got the right software and if there's any bugs or anything, they've managed to iron that out. But honestly, if you're on a budget or you don't know if you're gonna use that focal length a lot and you're thinking, well, do you know what? Instead of buying the, the thousand pound version or the 1500 pound version, let's buy the 400 pound version of Viltrox, see if I like that focal length and go with it. And you'll actually be, I'm pretty much willing to bet you'll be impressed with the quality coming out of these fellas. I need a back. I've got a back. I need a back and a body cap. I have to get something because I've just had this flipping thing cleaned and that's the Viltrox one, fully enough. Oh, that's that there. And then that's the Viltrox one there as well. Absolutely chances of that. Apples to apples, straight away the Viltrox is, feels heavier, but it's a big it's a bigger lens in it. So build quality, they're built like a tank. They are built like a tank. Um, obviously you don't have the switches on the side there, the auto uh, auto to manual uh, focus switch, but the focus area there is pretty much the same. Um, it's a smaller profile lens, I, I bet, I'm willing to bet that the Nikon one would be sm slightly smaller than the Viltrox. Um, but to be honest with you, what I say, I, I mean, we'll, we'll, do, we'll try and keep this video short. And, and, and I'll, let, I'll say, I'll let you download the photographs so you can look at them yourself. There's no point in me going through them with you. You can look at them yourself and see. But it depends how you're going to use the lens, because if I was going to buy this lens, I want it to be able to track. So I would be more concerned about, and there's some Fuji lenses that I use on a regular basis that I absolutely love, but no, I can't use them for tracking. The 56 1.2 is not a tracking lens, but it's a wonderful lens. I wouldn't sell it ever. It's just, it's given me some of my most amazing uh, pre treasured images from weddings and events and stuff like that, that I know that the focusing is terrible on it, but I know that the results are gonna be superb off the thing. So when you're buying a lens or you're buying anything, you know it's horses for courses. Now this actually tracks really well. The, focus, the, the motors in it are wonderful. So I know that I'm happier using this at f2.2 and it's still giving me wonderful background blur. I'm not sure, I've not really done anything close focusing with it, so I don't know about the close focusing capability, so I don't know whether or not I'd use it for that anyway. But when you're buying it, you're buying it for you thinking, well, hang on a minute, what do I want to use it for? It, I don't actually know what the weaknesses are. If I'm honest, I probably would be worried about using this outside at weddings and stuff like that because of the weather sealing. So I like a weather sealed lens for events because if I have to go outside, do any shooting, then come into a warm environment, I've got more I've got more protection over the lens steaming up with a weather sealed gasket and if the lens itself has got a weather sealing. So that's one of the reasons I like weather sealed lenses and that's one of the reasons why you tend to pay a bit more than you would do on a cheaper lens. So you're not gonna get anything like that. So if, if you know that, then I would have to, I, mean, I wouldn't be using the Nikon anyway in truth, but if I was using this on the Fuji, I would probably opt for the 50F2 because I know it's got weather sealing and I know the, you know, that the, that, that capability is there. So it's, a, it's knowing what your gear is. If I'm in a studio doing portraits, this lens is gonna be fantastic. At 2.2 or even F2, I mean, look at the images I'll put up and you, you decide, because it's ultimately it's your decision um, whether or not you think they're sharp enough, whether your customers are gonna notice, whether or not you even bother pixel peeping. Um, but let's be honest, over the, over the last sort of 10 years, the technology that's come along in lenses is blinking bonkers. So you, 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 you're almost hard pushed to buy a lens really that's that bad. So this is a 350 quid lens compared to the Nikon, which I'm guessing is about 900 quid, 800 quid. It's definitely something that I would even consider buying to think, well, hang on, if I use it a lot and I really like the focal length, then yeah, okay, I'll sell it on and then upgrade to the Nikon. We mentioned selling it on. Um, when I sold my lens, I obviously paid, say, 350 quid um, Amazon, that sort of thing, when I bought it initially. When I sold everything, it was part of the thing, it was part of the the, the, the um, list of, of products I sold when I bought my bought into the Nikon system. I got 260 quid for it used. So that's one of the things I always think of is when I buy a Fuji lens or a Nikon lens, if I buy it second hand, I can use it professionally for two years, look after it, really look after it, uh, make sure it's always in a camera bag, protected. And then when I go to sell it, if I needed to sell it and I wasn't using it, I'm pretty much not gonna lose any money. So Viltrox, you can't, you don't get that. It's actually the first time, it's funny, because 
I've never done video on the Z7. I didn't really know. I knew how to film. I've done f manual focus video and stuff. I've, I've filmed B-roll shots on it. But I didn't know how to get, and obviously I always film on the Fuji X-T4, which I'm filming on now. And I didn't know how to get the video, the video on the Nikon to do constant focus to test this lens out. AFF, it's called on the Nikon. I'd never heard of such a thing. So it was a bit of a, if it wasn't for this lens, I never would have figured that out anyway. <laughs> Um, and when I put the camera on the lens, it did actually track my face really, really well. So it's not a lens I would ever use for that. But, you know, for focusing, for stills, Ellis running around, absolutely fantastic. Um, now, I mentioned Ellis. When I bought this, when I got this lens turned up, I um, I was going to work and I thought, I'll, I'll give it a, I'll, I'll run around the house for half an hour, give it a, give it a, give it beans for a few minutes. And... Um, Ellis, when he sees me running around the house with a camera testing something, he's got this little wooden camera that he puts around his neck and it's super, super cute. It looks amazing with it. And um, he, he always tries to take, like, pretends to take pictures of me when I'm taking them, waiting to try and take pictures of him. So I had this on the, on the Nikon and it had a uh, back button focus, ID Tech was on and everything. So I was waiting for him to come around the corner and as he came around the corner, I think he kind of knew I was there as well. So he's there, come around the corner and took a picture of me, taking a picture of him. But I'm not joking, it was the first photograph I took on this lens. And um, I, I literally, the, the, the back button focus and the eye autofocus and the area, the wide area zone was, was selected. And as he came around, it found the eye straight away. I think I'd have been at f2.2, just because I didn't know the lens and I knew by, by 2.2 it would be fine. Um, and the shot I got, the first photograph I took on this lens was one of the favorite shots I've took all year. So, and that was the very, very, I'm not even joking, that was the very first photograph I took on this camera. So to say I was pleased and I'm kind of biased um, <laughs> is a bit of an understatement. When I seen the photograph through the viewfinder, I was like, wow. It got the eye, it's seen it, because his eyes, you'll see in the photograph, you'll, his eyes only just, um, visible above the camera, so I was literally elated when he came around the corner, went like that to take a picture of me, and I went bang and caught the eye. And uh, when I showed Karis, my girlfriend, it, she was like, "Wow, I love that picture." And it's obviously because he's got his camera. It's one of my favorite photographs, and it's the it was literally the first photograph I took on this lens. After that, I went to work. Um, my customer said, "Can you do some product photographs?" So I just had these new boxes arrive. Can you take some pictures? So I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no worries. Ah, fantastic! Another chance to to use the the lens." So yeah, I took a few snaps of this, I took a few snaps of that so we can compare the two. Um, and I was really, really impressed with the, with, with the outcome of them. I thought, you know, th there's no issue. It's quite, it's quite low light. It's not struggling in the slightest. And I was really, really impressed. After, after that, I went down and met the missus down the beach and we, we, I thought, well, yeah, I'll, try the, I'll try and use the Nikon with the 85 mil Viltrox for some street photography. So I was walking around the, the seafront and Ellis was playing on the front there and uh, nailing focus on, on wide and I was back button focusing and waiting for it to find the eye. No issues whatsoever. AF continue, continuous, absolutely no issues whatsoever. And there was a few people walking along the promenade and it was finding their face at 1.8 and whether or not I was... You know, I made, it wouldn't have been the shot or the settings I would have used anyway, but just to see if it was tracking it, if it was finding their eye and it was doing absolutely no worries whatsoever. Um, and then from there, we went, we were heading home. We spotted this food festival marquee thing, went in there and this guy, we got chatting to this guy who was a musician and he says, oh, what are you doing with the camera then? I says, I'm just testing this lens. He says, oh, would you mind taking some pictures of me? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, you you singing it? Yeah. So he jumps up on the stage and starts knocking out a few tunes and gave me an opportunity to see what this this bad boy was like with back backlighting and uh, low lighting and crazy artificial lighting and again more 1.8 and looking for the bokey balls in the background and all the different colors and stuff so yeah in the first day of having this flipping lens i got a fair few shots i was really really pleased with so yeah i think i think that's the sort of thing that when you get a lens when you get a camera if you instantly warm to it and you instantly sort of like and, and enjoy what you're getting from it you um you want to use it, and I've, that, that, I've got a few lenses like that. I've got a few items that I, I like using a lot, just because I've sort of talked to it straight away. And the Viltrox has never given me any any problems, and I really really like it. And I think value for money, they're incredible. And I think I think I think Viltrox is one of these brands you need to keep an eye on. So go out and check out. Go and jump on their website. Have a look. See if they've got anything that suits your suits your needs. Um, I know they've got a one point. 
8, I think it is, wide angle 20mm lens that I've got my eye on for astrophotography. I'd really, really like them to send me one of them to play with. Maybe next year for astrophotography season. I think we missed the Milky Way now this year. But um, the one thing I will say that if I was, this is one I where I tend to stick to brands because if I've got if I've got two or three cameras that I'm using at an event and they're all Fuji lenses and then I just chuck on a Viltrox lens and start doing something different. When it comes to editing, I always see a difference in the contrast with the Viltrox lens over the Fuji one. I remember that for a wedding I did before. So I regretted putting the Viltrox lens on the wedding instead of the 56 1.2 because I wanted to try the lens out, so I wasn't bothered. I didn't miss any shots that I was particularly worried about, but I noticed the difference in contrast. So if I was only doing a job whereas I was only using one or two Viltrox lenses, it wouldn't be an issue. But because I was doing a wedding and an event, actually, I remember, um, where I used mainly Fuji lenses and then tried the Viltrox out, I could see a difference in contrast. So I had to add a bit more contrast in post. But other than that, Absolutely no worries. And I think they're a good low light focusing lens. I think value for money, they're exceptional. And yeah, highly recommended. So if you've never tried them, jump on uh, jump on Viltrox website and see what they've got and give them a go. So I'll leave it there. I was gonna go through the images with you now, but I think I'm probably, I've probably rabbited far too much. So uh, <laughs> I'll leave you to download them. I'll put a, a slideshow up or something on that for you to have a look at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for Viltrox for sending me this. It really, really is um, a lens that I know I'll get some good pictures off Ellis over the years. So yeah, definitely won't be selling it and it's great that I've got a nice um, portrait lens on the Nikon because obviously there's a... One thing I don't know and I don't really know how you know this is how lenses render resolution because obviously this is a 40 something, 47 megapixel camera. I don't know whether the Viltrox renders the resolution of a 47 megapixel camera. So if anybody knows how you find that out, let me know in the comments. I'd love to I'd love to uh, find that out. And also, I don't know uh, whether or not I said this at the beginning, but I'm not sure whether or not this is the Mark 1 or Mark 2 of the Nikon lenses because on the Fuji, it said Mark 2 on the box. On the Nikon, it doesn't, it's just said Z mount. It doesn't say Mark 1 or Mark 2. It doesn't say it on the lens, on the website. I couldn't, at the time of filming this, uh, perhaps Viltrox can let me know. I don't know if this is the Mark 1 or Mark 2. Maybe for the Z mount, they went straight in at the Mark 2. I don't know. So other than that, yeah, look for the Mark 2. I do understand from other people that shoot with them that the Mark 2 is the one to look for. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Thank you again for Viltrox for sending it to me. And uh, yeah. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed the uh, few photographs I'll stick at the end. And I'll see you in another video. Take care.